Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to see if we can smelt down some catalytic converters and recover the platinum. The platinum in these things is actually in this ceramic honeycomb in the center, and I don't know if this is going to work. So there's that ceramic honeycomb in there, and the platinum is plated onto that, that honeycomb stuff. So our first step here is uh, I'm going to take this over and get it plasma cut in half so we can pull it apart and get the honeycomb out, which is where all the precious metals are. All right, so here's our catalytic converter. We got it cut open, and really this is the only part we're after is this honeycomb looking stuff here. And so, there we go. So this is where all your precious metals are. So all this is just gonna go in the scrap pile, that's all junk. So now I'm going to take these and uh, I'm going to run a little sample of this before I uh, try it on the whole thing. So I'm going to probably knock off a little bit, crunch it up, and we'll smelt up a sample here and see if we can recover the platinum on a little bit. This whole thing hardly weighs anything. It only weighs uh, about 250 grams. Um, so there's really no weight there. It's just got a huge surface area. Um, and so that's actually good news for us because uh, we don't need a huge crucible once we get it crushed up. Okay, now I'm just going to take a hammer, crunch up some of this. It's really pretty soft. And there we go. We'll mix that up with some flux and uh, see if we can melt it down, get some platinum. Okay, here's our crushed up cats. We got about... Uh, 65 grams there. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to mix it with uh, 100 grams of anhydrous borax, 100 grams of lye, and 50 grams of silica for our flux. Here's our flux, and this is our crushed up catalytic converter. And the whole point of the flux is hopefully to dissolve the ceramic um, material that the platinum's plated on. So then the platinum is going to end up free uh, metallic form in the flux floating around once we get it all melted. And I'm going to add 50 grams of lead to this to act as a collector metal so that when the little pieces of platinum come in contact with the lead, they get absorbed into the lead button. And then we can cupel the lead away and be left with our platinum uh, bead at the end. Okay, we're all mixed up here. We're going to put it in our crucible and then I've got uh, this is actually 26 grams of lead um, I think 50 is overkill so we'll shove that lead down in there and then we'll get it put in our furnace here heat it up melt it all hopefully all that ceramic dissolves pour it into our cone mold and we'll check it out once we get it uh, cooled down Well, here's our crucible after our first pour, and you can see down in there there's a bunch of junk that 
either didn't get dissolved in our flux or it's pieces of platinum that are so high temperature melting, have such a high temperature melting point that uh, they won't melt and they didn't absorb into our lead. So I'll have to do some thinking about that and figure out what that stuff is. Okay, let's see what we got here. And there's our lead bead and it's pretty cool. The slag is actually clear enough. You can see through it. And uh, there's our lead bead. So that's pretty cool. Let me uh, get a hammer and knock it out of there. And that is what I was afraid of. It, it looks like we've got metal beads sitting on top of our lead. And I wonder if that's platinum, metallic platinum, just hanging out. I wonder, it, it looks like the platinum doesn't dissolve in the lead very well. Here's my lead, and uh, I, I kind of pounded it, knocked the slag off it, but you can see I, I pounded those metallic beads on top right into the, into the lead. Um, so th those probably are platinum, pieces of platinum. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cupel this, I mean, just, just to get rid of the lead. I don't think it's, I'm going to uh, recover the platinum bead. It'll probably be all these little tiny platinum pieces left in the cupel. Um, but then uh, we'll, we'll do some research and come up with another solution here for this platinum stuff. Okay, here's our little electric furnace that I do my cupelling in. We've got a cupel in there that's getting warmed up. I'm going to take my lead bead, put it in there, and uh, drive all that lead off into the cupel. So there's those, uh, what I'm calling platinum beads in there. And uh, we'll just drive off that lead and see what we have left in the cupel. All right, just a quick check on our lead here. It's all molten. Driving away in the cupel, it's turning black where it's soaked up the lead oxide. So that's working, we'll let that go a little bit longer. All right, let's get some eyes on our lead cupel here. Oh, hey. We got a little bead there. So there we go. We got a we got a little bead. That's that's cool. We'll let it cool down and pluck it out of there and see if we can get a weight on it. All right, so our first little lead button here is cooled down. Oh, it's not even attached to the cupel. Uh, let's see how much we weigh here. Point. 0.17 grams. So we got 0.17 grams from about 65 grams of catalytic converter. All right, so here's what we know. We know there's platinum in this. We know that mixing it with our flux ate up most of the ceramic. We were left with this junk on the side of the crucible. Whether that's platinum metal or just undecomposed ceramic, we're not sure. And we also know that the lead doesn't work as a collector metal. I'm going to try another sample. But uh, looking, a quick Google search told me that um, copper is the preferred collector metal for platinum. And this is some copper I made years ago, uh, saving it around. I just melted copper down and poured it uh, into cold water and made these these little beads, like cornflakes or, you know, cornflake copper, whatever. Um, so I'm going to use that. And here's my plan. I'm going to use about 10 to 15 grams of copper as a collector. I'm going to smelt a sample down. Then I'm going to take our copper collector metal, mix it with about 100 grams of lead, and try and cupel the lead and copper away and leave the platinum. And I'm going to have to cupel it at a higher temperature, I think. Um, but that's an easy, fast way to remove the copper and the lead. And if that doesn't work, then we might have to end up uh, doing electrolysis. Okay, test number two. We've got our same amount of flux, same amount of uh, catalytic converters broken up, and I've got 10 grams of copper in there as a collector. I'm gonna put it right back in the crucible we just used. And repeat the process and see how copper does as a collector.
And there's our crucible after the second pour. And it looks significantly better. Um, there's not a bunch of junk up the side like there was in the first one. There's still a little piece or two down in the very bottom there. Um, but I think it cleaned out quite a bit, quite a bit better. Uh, and then here's the, here's the crucible cooling down. And uh, hopefully we got our copper and platinum metal down there at the bottom. And one of the tricks here is platinum melts at a ridiculously high temperature. It's like 3,300 degrees Fahrenheit or something. And so we have to uh, essentially combine it with a metal that has a lower melting point so we can get it all together in an alloy and then remove the, the other metals. And, and the second one, we're using copper. Uh, the first one was lead. So we're going we're gonna to try and remove our copper base metal now and see if we can get our, our platinum button that we're looking for. Okay, everybody, cross your fingers. So we have a nice little copper bead at the bottom of this. Well, there's our, there's our copper metal right there at the bottom. The slag isn't nearly as transparent as it was in the other one. Well, there's our little copper uh, collector metal button. Um, but I'm all distracted by this slag. Look at this stuff. It's crazy. It's green and transparent in the middle. And then it's, it's red on the outside, right where it touched the cone mold. That is crazy stuff. It's like all the oxides got sucked to the outside and chilled really fast. And then the the rest of the slag was left in the middle to, to cool slowly, I guess, or didn't have any impurities. That is wild. If uh, if anybody has any idea what's going on there, let me know, because I've, I've never seen anything like that before. That's super cool. But, all right, well, enough of the slag. Um, let's look at this copper bead. We'll get that... Uh, cleaned up and get it weighed. I put uh, exactly 10 grams in, so we'll get a weight on it and see how much I have left. All right, here is our little copper collector bead. And uh, the good news is there's no um, little silver BBs like there was in the lead. Um, so it looks like the copper got it all sucked up um, and it's nice and shiny. So let's get it weighed. I, I ended up with, uh, or I put 10 grams in. And we got 9.2524 grams out. Um, so we lost a little bit of copper. And I'm, I bet that's what all that red stuff in the slag was. I bet that was copper oxide um, that ended up getting oxidized during the smelt. And then it was uh, absorbed in the slag. But um, we have our copper. So now we got to get our platinum out of our copper. All right. So I'm going to commit two cardinal sins of cupelling here. Um, the first one is you don't want to cupel stuff with a lot of copper uh, when you're cupelling gold because the copper oxides will carry the precious metals into the cupel with it. Um, and again, it's not a bunch. It's like maybe 5% loss. Um, but that's one of the things. The second one is I'm going to cupel it at a, at a much higher temperature. I'm going to, I'm going to try and cupel at about 2,000 degrees um, and, and help drive all this copper off. Uh, also, the higher temperature you, you, uh, cupel at, the more precious metals you lose. So, those are the two things I'm gonna do that, that, um, aren't recommended. But I'm gonna use this big, huge cupel. It can hold up to almost 400 grams of lead. I'm gonna start by putting the copper in there, and this is 102 grams of lead. So, I'll get, uh, that put in the furnace, and that'll all melt together into a copper alloy or a copper lead alloy, and then it'll start to oxidize and the lead oxides will be absorbed into the cupel here. Um, hopefully carrying all the copper with it and leaving us with a nice platinum uh, BB. All right, we'll take a look here. We're up over 2,000 degrees. Um, I got the door cracked a little bit to let the oxygen in. Oh yeah, it's hot. There's our lead, it's it's going away. You can see it's soaking in the cupel there, so we'll let it go a little longer. Okay, here's our bigger cupel, and we got a bead there. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, so two things. One, we got rid of all that copper, which is kind of surprising. Um, so we cupelled about 10 grams of copper with 100 grams of lead. So that worked out pretty good. Um, and we ended up with a, with a bead in the bottom. Um, so let me get it pulled out of there and get it weighed. Now, uh, what I actually did is I added our first bead into this uh, lead as well because there was so much junk left in the crucible and I reused the crucible and melted all that stuff back down again. So um, now we have uh, essentially 125 grams worth of uh, catalytic converter here in this bead. So we'll get it weighed and then we can do some math on that. And here it is. Out of 125 grams, we got just shy of half a gram of precious metals. So that worked out pretty good. So I got to thinking about those little tiny beads that we recovered in our lead, uh, right on top of our lead button. And uh, it's not supposed to work that way. The platinum shouldn't come down and collect as a button because it doesn't have a high enough melting temperature. Um, but if that's in fact what happened, I'm going to try a uh, smelt without any collector metal and see if we can get any beads or a single bead of platinum uh, down at the bottom. So if that works, then we can get away from the collector metal and the cupellation process and just direct smelt them. Um, so we'll try it out and see what happens. So here's that crucible after uh, the smelt with no collector metal. And you can see there's, uh, there's a few little pieces down there in the bottom. But it's not like at first with the lead. So now I'm wondering, maybe I didn't get the lead one hot enough. Um, but anyway, we, I mean, it's not like there's a bunch of junk down there. So it looks like we got pretty good decomposition of the material. Um, also, the other thing I'm noticing here is... I'm using the same slag recipe that I use, or the flux recipe that I use for my gold smelting. And I've noticed when I smelt the gold and the sulfide concentrates off the shaker table, the crucible gets eaten up really fast. And this one, I've done four or five smelts now um, with this same uh, recipe and uh, three of them on the platinum. And the crucible still looks pretty good. So I think what's happening is there's something with the sulfide reaction that is eating up the crucible. It's not necessarily the flux. All right, so we ended up with that little 0.06 gram bead um, from just direct smelting. And the lead and the copper both had higher recovery. I used the same amount of catalytic converter. And so um, what I've done here, this is the last uh, bit I have. I've crushed up the slag from the uh, smelt I just did with no collector metal, thinking that there might be some precious metals or platinum left in the slag that didn't get conglomerated into that button. So I'm going to reuse the slag. I've got uh, another 65 grams or so of the catalytic converter crushed up. It's mixed down there at the bottom. It's just all uh, filtered down to the bottom. I'm going to melt this down, and once it gets molten, um, I'm going to add a little bit more flux uh, just so we don't um, saturate our, our slag and our flux uh, with, the, with the ceramic. So I'm going, to, I'm going to add a little bit more, bring it up to you know an inch from the lip, let all that melt. Hopefully we have enough capacity to um, melt the ceramic and I'm going to add copper to this one as well at that 10 grams again and see if we can recover uh, more metal out of this uh, as well as the amount from the new catalytic converter I'm doing. And here's our last cupel. There's our little bead and it's got a little dimple on the top. Um, so I think we got a little problem with our cupellation process. I don't know if it's driving off all the base metals, uh, but let's get it weighed and see how much it weighs. Well, I got 0.14. So in the first half, we got almost half a gram, and in the second half, we got 0.14 grams. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fresh cupel, mix it with a little bit of lead, 
I'm going to combine all the buttons. There's our first two. There's our last one. And uh, recupel them and see if I can drive off some more of that material. And here's the way to all three of them. And you can see this is this one here is the one that I direct smelted. And it weighs the least, but it it looks like metal. I mean, it's metallic and it's actually a little bit pink. Um, and then the other two are just this kind of dull black gray looking junk. Um, so let me let me recupel them all and see if I can get them down uh, in weight or at least get them to a shiny looking metal button. And there's our bead with all the buttons melted down into one. It's kind of got like a black scummy layer on it. Um, probably some oxides left over. We're still at that 0 0.64, 0 0.65, so we still have all of our metals. Um, let me go see if I can get it zapped with that XRF gun and see if we can figure out just exactly what metals we have here. All right, guys, so I, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I'm not quite sure where our, all our precious metals went. Uh, you can see from the XRF picture there that we recovered some palladium, uh, but we only got, you know, I don't know, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 grams. Um, so I really don't know what happened, and, and I'm really hoping that someone out there can help me figure out uh, either what I did wrong. Did I, can I just not get it hot enough? Um, by melting it, the platinum has such a high melting point that it needs to get, you know, 3,500 degrees. Uh, did that catalytic converter not have the precious metals in it? Was it off a brand new car or something? Um, it looked kind of small. Was it, you know, not, not the one I needed? The other thing I'd like to ask, you know, is there some, some really cool videos out there? Um, Cody's Lab, Street Tips, uh, some of these other guys have done uh, catalytic converter refining. Um, help me out. Did I do something wrong? You guys are using acids. Can it be smelted? Uh, I'd really be interested in trying to figure this out uh, or, you know, just, just that it doesn't work. Not necessarily how to do it, but if smelting doesn't work, um, I want to I wanna understand that part as well. So I showed you guys what happened. Um, it wasn't really the result I was hoping for or expected. Uh, we didn't recover any platinum at all. A little bit of palladium. Um, and again, I hope to get some information from you guys and maybe try this again in the future uh, with, a, with a different setup um, or a different way of doing it where we can recover more of the precious metals. So um, again, not what we wanted, but a kind of an interesting experiment and maybe one of those things where now we know what not to do. Um, and like so many things in science, that's a lot of the times what happens is you, you don't get the right answer the first time. So um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you think. Any advice from you guys will be greatly appreciated. So um, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.